a, a, the cleaner the recording, of course, the better, because then we can apply compression, we can apply limiting, we can do some manipulation, and even though whatever we're doing is going to affect the sound somewhat, you're going to lose some quality, we have a, some, way, some way to go. We should have some headroom, some way to go. That's not to say that some engineers like to mix through a processor because they really want to hear what it's going to sound like after it's been really compressed and limited. But they really, these guys, you have to be really good to know what you're doing because it's, you're locking in more of the processing. And then we, our hands are tied behind our backs. So what, we, what we'd like to have is a clean recording. And that means the earliest generation of the mix not uh, a few generations down, and we'd like to have even a hard drive. We'd like to have maybe uh, the original hard drive that you mixed to. So we have the best quality that we're starting with, because if, you, if you've like uh, interleaved the signal and you've made a DVD, uh, a, a CD-ROM or something like that, and you send it to us on that, all of these processes degrade the sound. So the, the closer we can get to the earliest generation of that mix, the better off we'll be. So that's a really big factor. Uh, and it doesn't matter what sampling rate for us, anyway. I don't know about other mastering studios, but we don't need people to change it to 44.1 uh, because we, don't, we do a lot of our processing in the analog domain. So, uh, and that only degrades the sound, sampling rate, conversion degrades the sound. So if you mixed it in 48 or 96, leave it there. Leave it in, in that uh, sampling rate and bit rate uh, because we'll come out with a much cleaner recording. Because really, the cleaner the recording, the more that thing's going to jump out of the speakers. It's just the way it works.